Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted these three fun animal illustrations using a mixture of ink and watercolour. I'm also going to talk to you a bit about a certain art challenge that takes place around this time of year and tell you more about these paintings as well as the upcoming relaunch of my Etsy shop. So make sure you watch till the end if you want to know more. Now before we start I do need to mention that I've had a few issues with lighting on my videos recently and whilst I am aware of it, it's not quite sorted yet, so my apologies but please bear with me. As always, all the materials I'm using will be listed in the description box below along with a link to the various reference photos from Pixabay. So with all that said, let's get on with the video. So at this time of year I'm usually preparing for Inktober and for those of you who haven't heard of it or who are new to my channel, Inktober is a month long art challenge from Jake Parker where you create a piece of artwork in ink every day for the month of October. I've taken part in this challenge for the past four years now and really enjoyed it and always see it as a good way to practice my inking skills, experiment with new ideas and have some fun. The illustrations you're seeing me paint today is what I wanted to try out this year, so combining realism with a bit of illustration in a fun and light-hearted way. And it's an idea I've been playing around with off screen for some time now. And actually if you follow me on Instagram I did a similar illustration back I think in 2016. It was of a realistic mouse in colour pencil with an ink outline of a little mouse hole. But I never got round to developing it and to be honest I'm still not sure if it works. But with a bit more time I think it does have potential and could maybe be a good idea for some greeting cards, bookmarks or even postcards. So please let me know your thoughts by dropping a comment in the box below. That said though, I've decided not to officially take part in Inktober this year, which in a way is sad because it's something I was looking forward to doing and even got as far as planning. But in a way it's also a bit of a relief because I feel like I've got a lot on my plate at the moment with work commitments and so on and I need to be a bit kinder to myself and those around me which means not taking on a month long art challenge right now. You may have also heard about the recent allegations from artist Alfonso Dunn against Jake Parker accusing him publicly of plagiarism which has also put some people off taking part in the Inktober challenge this year. But I can honestly say my decision not to take part was made before this news came to light and is based solely on my own personal circumstances. I think it's very difficult to know what the truth is in situations like these when often you don't get the whole story or the information you do get can be biased or based on hearsay. So I wouldn't want to take sides anyway. Me taking part or not taking part could be viewed by some as supporting either one or the other, but quite honestly I like the fun of a challenge and think everyone should be able to choose whether they want to take part or not without being judged or being made to feel like they are taking sides. If you were to ask me if I had more time, would I take part, then yes I probably would because I was looking forward to sharing my ideas with you guys and for me Inktober is a good excuse to be able to try something different to my usual style. There is also the added benefit with a 31 day art challenge that if one day you draw or paint something you're not happy with, you don't have time to dwell on it too long as you're always moving on to the next day's painting. So if like me you do tend to dwell, it can be a real advantage. The momentum keeps you being productive. You might not like all 31 pieces of art you create, but by the end of the month if you have 10 paintings that you do like, it's 10 more than you would have if you'd not taken part. So like I say, I do Inktober because I enjoy it and because I love being part of a community that enjoys it too. Anyway, I hope you're not too disappointed that I won't be doing it this year, but in past years I have also noticed that my Inktober videos on YouTube at least do well at the start of the challenge but tend to drop off towards the middle to end of the month and I don't want people to get bored. So if you like this illustration style I'm showing you today, then let me know and I might post some more examples on Instagram instead. So these mini paintings are a small 7x5 inch size and they were all done within an hour and a half. I really like the simplicity of the designs, especially the duck here, but I would like to experiment a bit more with maybe the backgrounds and composition before I think about making them into anything I would like to print or sell. And on the subject of selling and another reason for being a bit busy to take part in Inktober is the fact that without realising it I also chose the 1st of October to relaunch my Etsy shop. 
I am really excited about it though and I've been working really hard to get new prints, give the shop a new look and lots of other exciting things as well. So on the 1st of October when the shop reopens there is going to be a month long sale which will be a huge 30% off all originals and prints from before the relaunch. There will also be free UK delivery and free delivery to the US when you spend over $35. So please do make a note on your calendars and in your diaries to go and have a look around. There will be five new prints too, which are going to be at new, more affordable prices. And I've also ordered new fresh packaging, new stickers and made new thank you cards. And I'm really pleased with how it all looks. Once the older prints are gone, they're gone and I will be replacing them with fresh new designs. So if there's something you like or have had your eye on, go grab it while you can. I'll leave a link to the shop down in the description box for you as well. Okay, so let's move on and talk a bit about these paintings. Oh, and by the way, I've done the painting part in watercolour today, but would have used coloured inks instead if I was doing it for Inktober. My watercolour palette is just a lot easier to get out and set up. So I had this idea to combine my love of animals and realism with some simple ink outlines drawn over the top with a black waterproof fine liner. It's a bit like when you draw funny things on magazine photos I suppose, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's played around with this idea, but I thought it would be fun to experiment with. I also thought about maybe adding some speech bubbles or quotes and making them into postcards to send to people, especially at this time when we are limited to how many people we can get together with and so on. So I definitely want to explore those ideas a bit more to see if it'll work or not. I think the little party hat on the duck worked well, but I wasn't sure with the penguin here whether to draw the ink out line as line art over the top of the penguin or make the whole waistcoat black and white. But with the background white, I decided I'd keep as much colour visible as possible. I used blues, turquoise and violet on the belly and then indigo to define some individual feathers on the wings. And on the darker area under his belly that was in shadow, using the negative painting technique to define some more feather shapes too, like I had on the duck. With these smaller designs I filled in the eyes using my black fine liner as it was a lot easier than painting them in with a brush. Then I painted on the waistcoat and I can see now why people love digital illustration because it would be really easy to undo and redraw if you needed to, not something that you can do with pen and ink. The last illustration I did today was a little blue tit on a radio and this was one of those times when the idea in my head didn't really match up with how it turned out on paper. But having done it I can now see a few easy ways that I could improve the overall look. For one I think I'd try it with a bigger bird as sweet as this blue tit is there just isn't enough colour on the page. Or I could paint the swoosh area behind the music notes or maybe this might look better with a coloured radio and just the musical notes in ink. So there's a few things to try. The blue tip was also really hard to paint realistically as it was just so small. And although I don't really think there would be much call for these illustrations on a larger scale, if I were to increase the size at all, it would just draw attention to the imperfections, which does really bother me another reason why a lot of illustrators like to work digitally. Anyway, I'm not about to give up just yet on this design and it was really fun and quick to paint. I used lemon yellow and ultramarine blue for the bird's feathers and indigo for the darkest areas on the beak and around the eye. I also mixed the lemon yellow and ultramarine blue together for some of the more greeny feathers on the bird's chest and added in some warmer quinacridone gold for good measure. For the radio I just outlined it with black fine liner and the one I'm using for this is a very tiny 0.03mm nib. 
It came in a pack of 12 different sized black fine liners that I got from Amazon and they range from this 0.03mm which is the smallest up to a 3mm chisel nib and they are the brand Mypore which I've not heard of but they seem really good and claim to be waterproof and archival. This fine liner did skip slightly on the more textured surface of the cold press paper but I quite like that as it looks less like a colouring in page and it also gave me a bit more flexibility when outlining the circle shapes on the radio. With the tricky outlines done, all I had to do then was to outline the music notes and rub out my pencil guidelines from underneath. Whilst I'm not completely happy with them, I do like elements of all of them and I'd love to know what you think, so let me know in the comments. And give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you all next week with another video. Thanks for watching, bye!